So let me sort of start off by just giving you a sense of conceptual framework that animates what I do, uh, and hopefully follow it up with some illustrations. In an unequal world, some stories are told and heard, some are not. They lie, as Professor Mehta pointed out earlier, in Indian languages, and very often in non-metropolitan languages. They may also be the stories of the rural, the pastoral, linguistically, culturally, religiously minor. And when we don't know these stories, we tend to think they don't, do not exist, neither those humans nor those stories. I remember years ago attending a panel discussion on partition in Delhi, and there was Gulzar, Kamleshwar, a lot of people talking about the Bengal partition and the Punjab partition. And I remember asking this question about whether they were aware that the Sindhi community also went through a partition experience, and they did not have a corresponding state in post-partition India, and their experience of partition was sort of remarkably different from that of the Punjab. Uh, and I remember Gulzar saying to me, Rita ji, unke baare mein likha nahi gaya. Which is to say that because someone has not been written about, it did not happen. And what is that relationship between experience and what is spoken or heard of that experience? These are some of the questions that bother me. But let me come back to what I was saying, which is to say when that happens, knowledge produced thereof is then selective, it is skewed, it is violent. And it is in that knowledge archive that I make interventions, whether I do that through the study of partition or that that of borders, borders of languages, of territories, of people, and so on. So I translate text, situation, context. Sometimes I talk about very specific people and communities, whether it is the Muslim living in the largest ghetto of Ahmedabad, or whether it is an abstract idea of secularism as it translates conceptually through different languages, and so on. In doing so, I examine people as they speak, write, remain silent, and therefore language becomes for me a site of self-definition and also as something that shapes perception of the world. Translating India is one of my early monographs on the subject. In doing so, I also go on to look at minoritization of language itself, its hybridity, its mixtures, and out of this come books like Chutnifying English, The Phenomenon of English, and more recently, A Multilingual Nation, Translation Language Dynamics in India. I look at experience as an important site of knowledge making and of archive making. Finally, in what I do, the everyday and the quotidian becomes very, very important because I come from a region where neither humanities nor elitist institutions have been given the kind of nurturing that it should have, nor do I come from that kind of a family or a community. Therefore, the issues that grow ground up acquire a huge significance in the way I see the world. Thank you very much.